Hey, look at me, gente. Welcome back to Two Drinks and a Ting. I'm your Ting Natalia. And I'm Lauren, back again. Yes, we're so happy to have her. Yay. What is a Ting without her two drinks? This, me, gente, is a Drink. rum strawberry lemonade. Yeah. So it basically speaks for itself. It has strawberry lemonade, Don Q, white rum, and simple syrup. Cheers. And look at the colors. It's very summer-esque. Very much so. We love the glasses. Yeah, this is good. It's refreshing. All right, listen. I'm going to tell you this right now. I have a challenge now. My challenge is to get to 500 followers. Okay. In six months. Okay, that's a good challenge. I don't know how I'm going to do it. That's still a work in progress. 500 followers on what? 500 followers on YouTube specifically. So for the visual viewers, your girl's trying to get monetized. And now YouTube's done changed the game. Let me proceed. Let me tell you. She's not trying to work forever. You know what I mean? Know what I mean, Jelly Bean? I do indeed. Can't wait to be retired. (sighs) Seeing all these old people at Universal. I don't even want to retire when I'm old. I want to retire when I'm like 40. (sighs) I want to get rich. What are you going to do to get rich though? Start my own business. What business are you thinking of starting? Um, well, first, I want to start with a coffee pop-up. Ooh. Like at the little markets and stuff that we go to a lot. Mm-hmm. I want to just like have a booth. Mm-hmm. have a friend that works with me and get an espresso machine and start making coffee on the weekend. My goal in six months, so I can be able to get one of the lower like monetizations, I need 500 subscribers, three valid public videos. I have that. And either 3,000 public watch hours or 3 million short views. So again, six months, 500 followers. You hear me? You see me? And of course, I'm not alienating my beautiful audio listeners. This is for you, the ASMR. I need you to like, subscribe, and follow wherever you get your podcasts. Thank you. If you didn't hear that, to the audio listeners, please like, subscribe, follow anywhere you get your podcasts. Now that that's done, again, 500. Thank you. (laughs) (laughs) Speaking of podcasts, I have a new podcast for you. It's called Scamanda. Okay. It's kind of expose type of podcast. It's a woman who discovers and hears about a case where a woman gets busted for lying about having cancer. Oh, I just watched an episode of Dr. Phil where there was a woman on there who lied about having cancer. I wonder if this... She had somebody wipe her... She had like a caretaker that would literally wipe her ass... Like she did the most. She said that she was, she couldn't use her legs. I forgot what the other excuse was that she had on top of cancer. Holy fuck. Yeah, like really deep into it. So this one is more like a um, a documentary style podcast. They have people who knew the suspect. They have family members who are part of that point of view. Like, And they have the investigative researcher mm-hmm. give their idea of what happened. So... Basically, this woman, her name is Nancy. She's an investigative researcher. She was okay. sent an email saying, I think this is a really good story for you. Right. You need to look into it. So she opens it up and she's like, this lady, Amanda, has been lying to the church that and her and everybody, the family, friends, all that stuff. She's been lying, saying that she has stage four cancer and she doesn't. She's lying. And she's been doing this for years. So the lady's just like... Taking it with a grain of salt because this is like her side gig. Mm-hmm. She's one of the sleuths and stuff like that. You know what a sleuth is? Yeah. Okay. So she's a sleuth and this is all done on her free time. But she's looking, she's looking. Mind you, this was when Tumblr and blogging was the rave right. and stuff. So the Amanda girl, she had a blog. Mm-hmm. And she would say everything that happened to her, went to the hospital, had this procedure done. Um, I just been diagnosed with this procedure. I just like all this different yeah. shit. So the lady, Nancy, she looked at the accusations that the um, person has sent. It was anonymous, of course. And then she looked and correlated everything that was going on in the blog. And then she was just like, okay, let me see the validity of what she's stating. Mm -hmm. So like, yes, she would get things correct in terms of the doctor she would see or going to the facilities, but 
things weren't adding up when right. she was describing the procedures and her aftermath of the procedures. Like her aftercare and what she had to go through. Yeah, like how she felt. Like she felt, she was like, oh, I feel better than normal. Da, 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 da. And historically, people who did receive those procedures were oftentimes fatigued for multiple days. Right. Usually with cancer, my aunt um, passed away with with um, cancer a couple years ago. And um, the process was not, it wasn't like you started feeling better. Yeah. You felt worse after everything that you had to go through. Yeah. And she just kept on saying, like, she, she would put in little nuggets when, like, people keep on saying that I have such a strong spirit because I'm always happy, but it's the grace of God, da 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 da, da. And then um, the Nancy chick, she had family members who had chemo and cancer. Like, right. just like, no matter how happy your spirit is or how high your spirit is, right. you're going to be exhausted. No, you're you're gonna putting be exhausted. your body through the ringer. And isn't chemo radiation? It is. Exactly. Your body's reacting. Afterwards your hair falls out you lose weight you have no appetite Mm -hmm. it's it's a whole it's you don't feel better from chemo exactly and it's not (laughs) even the mindset it's just like you're gonna feel like shit because that's your body cancer that makes you feel bad it's the chemo that makes you feel bad so she started like putting her stuff together she was like okay i see what she's saying now but just because the person isn't following the guidelines of someone with cancer, right. losing weight and all that stuff, doesn't mean she's lying. Right. So she didn't go directly towards the Amanda chick. She did her own little light research, but she was getting in contact with the email person. Like, I'm looking into this. Thank right. you for bringing this to my attention. Uh, da, da, da. Girl, so much shit was coming out first. I'm not going to say everything because you got to hear it out yourself. But this crazy bitch, she was doing chemo and... She got pregnant and then she was healed Bye. and the people were just like, you can't get pregnant when you're doing chemo. That no. just doesn't happen. They freeze your eggs before you do chemo because most of the time you probably won't be able to have a child afterwards. Exactly. Cause chemo is radiation. You're yeah. fucking up your organs. You're killing, you're killing every cell in your body trying to kill the cancer. Exactly. You're killing yourself to try to, in an attempt to kill the cancer. Exactly. So this dumb bitch says, oh, the doctor says the pregnancy healed my cancer. The lady who, that she was speaking to, like, which was like a friend who suspected and had like inclinations that she was lying, was like, okay, now, bitch, I know you're fucking lying. Right. Because if that was the case, if that was the cure, everybody would be getting pregnant. That's what I said. She got cancer back in 2012. Right. And she got, she had her kid, um, at the beginning of 2013. Right. And she said that they didn't discover she had cancer because the pregnancy was hiding it. So when she gave birth, that's when the cancer sprung on the MRIs or on the, the lab tests and stuff like that. Have you never watched Grey's Anatomy? She clearly didn't. There's an episode where this woman has cancer and she's pregnant. It was mm-hmm. an old, oh, old, no, 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 old, no. old episode. And she decided that she would rather have a baby than start cancer treatment. She didn't want to terminate her pregnancy. Mm-hmm. If you're pregnant, that's not... You can't do both. No. So then this happens for years. Mm-hmm. And she went to a big church. Right. Thousands A mega of, church. <laughs> uh, yes. A mega church. Fucking faith assembly. And she told her story. So people, because there was thousands of people there, they would give her money. Money up the ass. They would do charity drives for her. Because if you want to con someone and get a good vibe, get religious people and say that Mm -hmm. you're dying. Because they love to help a hoe out. Mm -hmm. And she literally said, like, there's over 4,000 people. And then they did the live streaming as well. So there was an additional 1,000 people, too. If one person gave a dollar, she would have enough to do her cancer treatments of $13,000 for that one. If one person, each person gave a dollar. Right, right. That's a lot. That's a lot of money. So this happened for years. People were donating gift cards for meals, do- giving, um, reaching out to people she, they knew for concert tickets, um, g- donating their flights, their miles, so she can take her treatments to and from um, New York. Like she got the work. They were paying for her mortgage, paying for her children's ex- extracurricular activities. They were fen- they were funding this bitch's life for like. Could be wrong about three or plus more years. Mm. Whole entire time has a husband. Allegedly, he doesn't make enough and she can't work because she's doing cancer treatments. She has, during her cancer journey, mm-hmm. has two kids. What does her husband think? 
Her, the really husband knows. goes along with it, but um, the way it's also being told is the husband has a daughter from a different marriage. Mm-hmm. She's in the podcast and she gives her um, her accounts of how the relationship was. Right, right. She would say that, oh, my father would, wouldn't want to go places because he wouldn't want to have to answer questions, mm. like do things. Like they ended up buying a summer house. How are you buying a summer house when you claim you can't afford? He was probably just keeping his head down, but enjoying all the- Oh, the, for facts, because mm-hmm. he didn't have to work as hard as right. he would need to, to support his family. Right. He was enjoying the luxuries, but he didn't want to, he didn't want to do the lies. And he probably didn't ask a lot of questions. He probably just was He like, knew everything about it. He, oh. cause he would go along with her to these seminars and stand by her side where she's like saying like, oh, we do, I'm so tired. Cause I had 10 hour days at the hospital getting treatments and he would call the babysitter. Oh, Amanda's sick. I have to rush her to the hospital because she's having a bad reaction. Can you come watch the babies? He was in it. Oh. But after a certain point, he got too tired. He was like, "I'm tired of this bullshit." Right. So he was there as a performer, but he wasn't in. He wasn't involving in the involved in the lies anymore. Right. It's wild. It's so far six episodes right now. Jeez, I gotta watch. And that. it's an hour long each episode. Fuck though, I could <sighs> never. I couldn't imagine lying about having cancer. There are people that literally lose their lives every day from having cancer. And this bitch has the audacity. There are people that wish, that have like two months to live, that wish, that have whole families that they could, you know what I mean? That there was, and somebody's just out here playing the cancer card. That's crazy. And the fucked up part about it is her husband, first wife's daughter had cancer. cancer. And this bitch had the audacity. She probably realized how much attention she was getting. Probably. Mm-hmm. And this bitch had the audacity to go with the stepdaughter or the uh, first wife's daughter to a survivor um, bas- yeah. baseball game and stood there smiling, holding her balloons and shit. Can people the- go to jail for stuff like this? No. Isn't it fraud? It's a form of fraud. It's wire fraud because if you're getting money through like Cash App or something like right. that, it's going through the banking system. So that right. is considered fraud, but it's not illegal to lie about it. But they get the IRS involved. They get the um, police department. Like there's a certain area um, within the police department that um, handles on financial crimes. They get everybody involved. Um, she provides documents but all these documents are from softwares you can edit yourself. Jesus. This bitch goes in. That's it. That's sick. Scamanda. Sick. Girl, you need to watch it. So far, six episodes. I think it's a weekly drop. It's apparently been out for a few. So I don't know if there are any more episodes coming out, but right. so far it's six. Okay. Really I'll good. Check it out. I didn't go in deep because you got to hear yourself. It's right. fucking good. I'll check it out. It's wild. I'd love a good crime. True you crime. Know what I mean, heist kind of. You know what I mean? Yeah. I love that stuff. I got it. Girl. Hot mess. But have you been? I've been good. Busy. Working mm-hmm. like an old person. God, how does it feel not working for Starbucks anymore? Amazing. Literally, yesterday we were talking about like our one good thing that's going on in our life. And I literally said not working at Starbucks anymore. <gasps> I want to talk about it, but I also don't want... He's unstable. Is he going to get mad? I, I just said he's unstable. i'll I'll say it and i'll just block him from my story when i post it (laughs) okay okay so basically you know fired all that stuff he he sent a message in like a group chat that i'm still part of context talking about like how nobody like fucks with him anymore and like because of what he did he basically like wrote a message like going off on my my manager and um I calling her see you next Tuesday, like you're worthless. You know what I mean? Like he got banned because he came to the store twice and was talking shit about the person who fired him in Spanish to another coworker who's Hispanic. Mm -hmm. And when the person who fired him told him like, goodbye, have a good day. He screamed in the middle of the store. Fuck you on the top of his lungs. I'm like, girl, just go out normal. It's just a fucking job. It's, it's just Starbucks. coffee. It's just Starbucks. It's not like you- Was he doing school? I don't think so. And even okay. if he was, like you're- It's not worth all that. Mm. Bro, come on. Leave it alone. Let dead horses lie. Who the fuck? It's Starbucks. 
It wasn't good anyways. For real. Like, Starbucks. Why are you acting like you were having the time of your life there? Because we all know you hated it. Exactly. Go find another job. You're mm-hmm. at work. Suck it up. Do the job. Be nice to people. Say thank you. Say sorry. It doesn't fucking matter if you want to keep your employment at the end of the day. Your ego is not worth that. Now you got no job. You got no income. And everybody... Oh, uh, yeah. I was going to ask. Have you seen the new Flash movie yet? I didn't know it was out. I thought it was coming out in July. So, no. I, ha- I haven't seen it either. But I'm just kind of confused on why they decided to k- keep him as the Flash. Like, was, he's so problematic. I was telling you this. I was. That's why I was surprised when you were like, I can't wait to see the Flash. And I'm like, do they still have the same guy? I don't even want to see it anymore. He looks scary. Not only does he look scary, but when you, like, go down the he's list. like unhinged. I was going through the timeline of, like, all of the things that he's done. He has, like, battery assault charges. Like, trying to sleep with, like, a 14-year-old kid. Like, kidnapping. Um... It goes on. It's like it goes on through the years of all the shit that he's done. And every time he says, oh, I'm getting, I'm unstable. I'm getting mental health treatment. Bitch, I'm unstable. I get mental health treatment. That is not an excuse. I'm not out here doing that shit. What I don't get is he portrays himself as someone who's all about inclusion and all about like- Yeah, he's non-binary. Yeah, and all about like women's rights or whatever, but he's- He's assaulting women. It's a facade. He's probably trafficking very children. Protected, very protected because you know he's a rich. Like an, but a, that's an bullshit actor. because Johnny Depp was out, like alleged to be a woman beater from this Amber Heard bitch. But clear I still as don't day, even know. I, no, I don't. I'm on the fence about that. Clear as day, he was that's found not, not, not guilty, clear as day and she to me. clear as day she was. He was found not guilty, not and this bitch enough. was found liable. He lost. Many campaigns. Uh, that's not clear enough for me, though. It's not clear enough. But justice said it so. So we're just going based off facts. So how can Johnny Depp lose all his campaigns? And even Amber Heard with DC got fired. So how the fuck does this motherfucker not get fired in DC? Because he's obviously protected. You know they've been trying to make this movie for nine years and all this stuff kept popping up? Of him? Yeah. This movie has been in production At for that point, get rid like of nine him. years. Get the person who's they on even, TV. I think had to fire the director because he didn't want to work with him. And get a new director just I don't to finish. Want to work his and the movie either. honestly looks lame. Now it looks lame. But before you were like, did you see Bef- the trailer? When I saw the trailer, it looked good. But like, I'm not going to lie. I have this website where I can watch like movies and TV shows for free. Lucky. I can give it to you. I was like, this doesn't even look that good. <laughs> like, I already watched the new Spider Man on that website. I watched the Mario movie on there. I don't good. even go to the movie theater anymore. I'm waiting for the Little Mermaid to come out on Yes, there. she's been talking about the Little Mermaid her whole entire time since like her birthday because she was like <laughs> hinting. She was like, we should watch the Little Mermaid. And I'm like, girl, I have things to do that day for her yeah, birthday. Like, and I was like, I can't. Fuck y'all. <laughs> Ain't nobody wanted to see the Little Mermaid with me. <laughs> I went to dinner. Thank God you seen the light of day that this person was psychotic. Who? The flash cat. Oh, yeah. I didn't told- know much about it. And then once you said that to me, I did my own research and I was like, ew. He's crazy. I, and I he was looks just like a serial killer. He does. Yeah. He's definitely unhinged. Speaking of serial killers, there's this new show on Apple TV called In the Crowded Room. And it's got Tom <gasps> I Collins. heard about that. It's I've been good. hearing good reviews. I think and- it's a short series though. I think he's in like treatment right now for it. Yeah, I think um he said that um after his last project, I guess that was it. He said he's gonna take a year off because that was intense and he had long hair for it and he ended up shaving his head because he didn't want to portray he didn't want to look at that character anymore. Right. Damn, he's a it's method good. actor. I got two good shows. That one and From. From is the best show of 2023. Last year's best show was Severance. If you haven't watched Severance, get on Severance. Severance is such a good show. I haven't watched it. That's on Apple TV as well. Apple TV has a lot of good shows. I know. I got back on to Ted Lasso, finished My season three. My mom loves three. Ted Lasso. I My love mom loves Ted, Ted Lasso. Lasso. And I'm, start, I'm starting to finish right now season two of Slow Horse. It is. I gotta so, watch that. I've never watched that. You need to watch, especially about conspiracies in MI5, MB5, some British bullshit, M5. Okay. And you watched that show that was like, had Jennifer Gardner in it and Reese Witherspoon was the director. I think it was like. No, the only shows I've watched of Apple TV is Servant, the first season of C, Saving Jacob, The Slow Horse, Ted Lasso, but I've heard. A bit about Severance, but I haven't. You gotta watch. Severance. I haven't shot the that last bitch. thing he told me. You gotta watch that. Reese Witherspoon's the director. That one's good too. I saw the morning show with Reese Witherspoon in it. 
I haven't seen that yet. But yeah. you have you have to watch From. You have to watch From. Is it scary? Even if you don't think that you would like it. Is it scary? I'm not into scary stuff. I'm not into that kind of stuff. It's not scary. It's like... The poster says otherwise. The bitch looks scary. It looks like some gothic of bullshit. It's not scary. It's just a really interesting concept. It's like Lost on steroids. Like the people that made Lost and some of the actors from Lost are in this show. And I just started watching Lost actually because of how good From is. I never watched Lost. I never did either, but... From is so good that I was like, shit, I got to get something else. Because it's about to end. It only has two more episodes left this season. And I'm Ew. like, I need more. That's how good <laughs> it is. Like, I, I literally wait for it to come out. Well, what is it about? It's about basically what happens is, I'll give you a little bit of a synopsis. A family's on a road trip. This is how it starts. And they see a tree. They drive into a town. Everybody's acting weird, like standing around, like, you know. And then they keep driving to get back on the highway, but they keep ending up in the same town. Mm-hmm. They're stuck. They can't leave. Yeah. So every person that lives in that town saw the same thing. They were on a trip somewhere, whether it was back home. They were even in different states, and they saw the tree. And after they saw the tree, they couldn't. They were stuck in that town. Oh, okay. That sounds interesting. And But at night, these creatures come out of the forest, and you have to have a talisman in your door and keep all of your windows covered. It's kind of a spoiler, just a l- little bit of a spoiler, because they will come inside and eat you. So you can't be out past dark. That sounds like the, not the last season, but this one of the seasons of American Horror Story, the one with the vampires and shit. So it's like, if people come, it does. If people come into town and they don't believe you, they say they're like, fuck it. I don't believe you. Like, you know what I mean? Like you mm-hmm. guys are lying. Like they get destroyed, but they're trying to figure out why they're there. Mm-hmm. Who's controlling it? What is in the forest? What's going on? Because they can't really leave where they're at because when night falls, they're fucked. They didn't even know. They didn't even have talismans in the beginning. They would just hide underground and be quiet and hope that nobody heard them. This is giving me Stephen King. Actually, somebody just sent this to me. Stephen King just posted, you gotta watch from. I'll show you the Instagram post. Is it good on first episode? First episode. Because I hate having to give bitches First chances. Episode. It's good. It's so getting good. Violent. It's so but Severance is like my favorite show. It's just the writer strikes are going on right now. And what's his name? You know that guy who's in Tropic Thunder? That dodgeball movie? He's also in Meet the Fockers. Ben Stiller. Yeah, he's a director. And apparently he's been causing issues on set with everybody. Now they're not predicting it's gonna come out until 2026. Ain't nobody have time for that bullshit. No. I'm watching you watch Succession? No. Girl, Succession is kind of old, but I just hopped onto it because I was bored and I heard good things about it. And I was like, you know what? Let me just give it a chance. Some tomfoolery. Literally is Succession. So a guy, his name is Logan Roy. It's a family. Mm -hmm. He owns a conglomerate of media. His son is being taught and trained to a CEO after he retires. But this dude, Logan... Does some tomfoolery and some fuckery. And he's just like, mm, you know what? No, I don't want you to be CEO. And he says the timeline is where it starts off the show that the son Kendall is supposed to replace his father in I think about a month or some change. And once the deadline comes up, Logan is like, mm, I'm not ready to leave yet. And I don't want you to be CEO. Mm-hmm. And then it goes on to his three kids trying to prove to their father that they should be the one to take over the reins. So he has four kids, but one of them's not involved. They, she has, he has a girl named Siobhan mm-hmm. and the youngest named Roman. And these two, Kendall and Roman, are in the company. And Siobhan, she does her own shit. She does like some political management, strategic stuff like that, like mm-hmm. Olivia Pope bullshit. Right. Um. And then he worms his way into Siobhan's like career and so plays with her and is like, I think you would be a good CEO. And then it just goes off from there. So now Ooh. the three siblings are fighting, are fighting backstabbing each God, other. I never want to be like that with my, with my siblings. <sighs> no, my dad already straight up told us how it's going to be. When he retires, my brother's going to have a majority of the company. Like We'll say Raymond has 75, I have 25. Mm-hmm. My brother will dictate a salary for me because I'm an owner. Mm-hmm. And I don't have to really work anymore if I don't want to. But I already told my brother, like, girl, the minute that happens, I'm not working. I'm starting my dreams. <laughs> <laughs> I feel that shit. That's how I feel about like now. It's like, I just want to sell this bitch and I want to pay off a tiny home 
and get land and call it a fucking day. I'm so over being an adult, having a mortgage. That was all she wanted. Well, that's all I needed at the time. I didn't want a house. I needed a house. Who the fuck wants a house at my brother? 27. <laughs> Your brother's different and he's weird and he's trying to start a family and he's start 24. a life. <laughs> oh shit. Right. I'm on a different path. Right. I want to travel. I want to bump the fuck out. Right. I mean, life is life. Here we are. Today, I'm bringing the favorite missed connections. You said you knew or you heard about misconnections. I have. Who told you? TikTok. Bitches. Me? No. So you know of the gist of misconnections. Mm-hmm. Have you ever yourself gone on Craigslist? Hell no. Bitch, what the fuck? <laughs> for, for a laugh, a cackle. For nothing, I've gone on Craigslist. That is not my... I'm on Facebook Marketplace. I love Facebook Marketplace. I am not on Craigslist. <laughs> I go on it often because it's so interesting and the way people write, it's like, you think it's a novella and it's just like, Sway, what is going on with you? The way they just be narrating their life? Absolutely not. Let me create- I will never post on Craigslist about a man. So I got a couple though. I don't want a man that bad to be posting on Craigslist. Or anywhere for that matter. And you know they ain't going to see it. Because who the fuck thinks about Craigslist anymore? Girl. Serial killers. Serial killers. Weirdos. Mm. So I'm going to tell you the title and I'm going to tell you the description. Okay. Foot care. I'm already grossed out. Looking for that woman who likes her feet to be pampered. Couple group to own. Board want to play for another couple or anyone who wants to can leave door open. Role play. What about Have STDs? You catch- <laughs> Have you catch blindfolds? So people are just wanting like so badly to be fucked that they're posting on Craigslist. Get a vibrator. (laughs) Whatever works, private, let me know. No. I'll open door for you if you like stroking for your role play. Whatever you say goes, text or email first. Where is that female I seen in Henderson that was looking good? Where did that female go that was looking for a really cool 420 guy that loves a nice kitty cat and more packing nine plus you won't Bitch, you are not it. packing nine <laughs> if you were you wouldn't be on craigslist i'll tell you that right now if you had nine inches you wouldn't be on craigslist looking for an asian buffet any asian women out please, there please i've had enough i'm so uncomfy right now nowhere i can eat all- this is giving me the ick <laughs> <laughs> It's literally giving ick energy. In search of hard These work. Sound like people you would see it that would be hanging out in a park all fucking day. <laughs> it is. In search of no hard job, work. No job, no car, rides a bike, and lives with their mom. <laughs> Talking about I'm packing nine. If you're packing nine, you wouldn't be on Craigslist. I'm telling you that right now. Yo. <laughs> In search of hard worker, I looking for a hard worker guy who just down to work with the wood. I can play with the wood too. Just bring your tools and I have mine. We can use both of our tools to complete the work. Damn, these people must be ugly. (laughs) Because it's not that hard to get laid. I feel like it could be harder for a guy. No. I think it is. No, I think it's hard to get laid maybe by an attractive person, but men will fuck a woman that looks like Patrick Starr. Well, yeah, men will- Not Patrick Starr. Patrick, the actual starfish. Easy. It's easy for women to have sex and to get fucked, but I feel like with guys, people look at it like, what a fucking creeper you are, like coming all like straightforward and stuff like that. I'm sure that there's a bunch of people out there that like it. I see them on Facebook posting. Do you? My crusties from high school, all they talk about is nobody wants to date me. Those are the people. Of course. Okay, so Christina June. Hey, it's me. I'm up north with my parents now. The pair is in the glove box along with the picture of you and me with our Arizona friend. Viv will hear from you first. I'll be respectful, just like I will to you. Me. I don't know what the What the fuck is that cryptic <laughs> ass message? <laughs> no dog. <laughs> lonely hearts go on tinder go on tinder i'm over it i'm over it these are old people that don't know about tinder and bumble and hinge go on tinder go on christian meat i don't know craigslist lonely hearts ladies my skies are gray for being alone and i hope that there is a lady to make them blue again 55 to 65 
literally told you it's an old person that doesn't know how to date. Oh, oh my God. Okay. The hot couple. Go on the- sugar babies if you're old. Sad. That's how you'll find somebody. You'll find For a- real. You'll find, oh, you got to have some money. You you'll probably find- don't even have to have that much money. This person probably doesn't have money to be on fucking Craigslist. But you could fuck a bitch on sugar babies for like 20 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even kidding. Ooh. Some girl that needs money. The hot couple at the bar. I saw the two of you. Super hot. I love to have... Oh, I love to be your toy. I should have kissed your wife. I should have gotten your number. I'm that handsome white guy. Six foot, 185 pounds. Hit me up. Let's hook up. I'm concerned for society. Girl, these people are desperate. I can't imagine being this desperate for sex. Like I said, get a vibrator. But is there men? What do they use? Uh, A pocket pussy. Uh, a flashlight is that what it's called the flashlight is a pocket pussy well maybe flashlight is a brand name but pocket pussy is oh, the what it is the overall goal mm- well what it's called oh okay it's like a little jelly that's like a literal like like porn stars will like like get um copies like they'll come like they take this stuff and like put it inside your vagina to take a mold of it and then they'll make a pocket pussy out of it like riley reed and all these other people they watch porn yeah Probably shouldn't start. If you can if you can achieve your goal without having to watch porn, keep it that way. No. Mm. I can't. I can. And I'll do it again. <laughs> <laughs> As she lists the porn stars. My favorite is Stella. Okay. I have a couple more. Okay. College guys. Looking for a college boy who needs extra work. Must be hot in good shape. Like your tool and whole worked regularly. Send full stats and pick. God, I couldn't imagine talking about sex like it's like a like it's like a scorecard on a basketball game. It's literally like a she fucking said send your send your what stats in pits. stats. What does that even mean? I guess how like, many people you've slept with, how long you can go. I you don't know, know, like oh, are you a top or bottom? Are you a twink? What are you looking for? Like I guess like a bear, like stats. Like what's your stuff? You know the spiel that gay men do. Yeah, I do. So that's probably your stat. Oof. Stat sounds like scoreboard points. It's it's, it's very transactional. It's just like yeah, a score. I couldn't imagine treating sex like a transaction. I mean, I guess you do when you're desperate and horny. Like I said, it could never be me. I could know that never for be me. F- I can tell you that shit for free. I'm not coming on Craigslist. No, it's not hard for me. Because <laughs> I'm telling you, it's not hard for women to get sex, but I strongly feel it's hard for men to get sex. White Dakota and mangoes. I was the driver that transported your truck when it broke down. You gave me mangoes when I dropped your truck at the office complex. You were gorgeous, and I can't stop thinking about that tight dress on your amazing body. I would it's love so scary. To, <laughs> I would love to get to know you and or just spend time with you. Hell, I'd even pay to feel that body. I would absolutely hate Creep. if somebody met me and then they posted about me like that on Craigslist. I that wish. Is such a violation. It's even worse than catcalling. Like, if I... No. That's so objectifying. Women do this shit, too. I like, don't doubt it. Sweatpants season. Ugh. Y'all some horny motherfuckers. <laughs> she could never. <laughs> Lost our girl who had so many roles. You want to come over, dress for the role of the evening, secretary, maid, nurse. There are so many. Lost your contact info, and we both got new phones. Do you remember that couple? It's like a game guess. Yeah. This will send you. Groom me. Good morning. Looking for someone who can assist me in a body grooming. I like to keep things nice and trimmed. I come to you. <laughs> These are making my tummy hurt. <laughs> <laughs> you can call me Pink Cheek. <laughs> we met at a hotel pool late at night at a hotel on 84. We both were traveling without our wives. We both had a couple of beers and went up to your room when the pool closed. One thing led to another and you ended up whipping out something to eat and disciplined me for not finishing my meal. That's how you ended up calling me pink cheeks. Let's try again and I'll bring a better appetite. <laughs> that one's okay to 
me. Not not because that's foreplay to you. No, that's okay because he's cheating. He's trying to find somebody incognito. I'm not what saying the that you hell? listen, I you didn't let me finish. I'm not saying it's okay to cheat, but that makes sense why somebody would go on Craigslist to try to find somebody. All these unsolicited weird other things are weird. It makes sense why somebody would go on Craigslist trying to find somebody. They're trying to be discreet. Exactly. That makes sense. I'm not saying it's right. I'm not saying I would do it. I'm not saying I condone it. That's the only one that's justified <laughs> so far. Okay. This is the last one. Jupiter. To the middle-aged lady in the short jean skirt at the gas station in Jupiter today, thanks for the view. When you bent over to get something out of the back seat, you smiled and I appreciate it as a middle-aged male. Tell me what I was driving as I'd oblige or certainly oblige to give you some lip service. Ew. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> that just literally dries me up. It doesn't do anything. It doesn't, it doesn't make the juices flow. It literally dries them up. It's fucking weird. You know that starfish from the fucking SpongeBob episode? Where he's like- <laughs> the SpongeBob movie? That's my Gina after hearing all of those dry as the sahara desert that is disgusting <laughs> not my cup of tea oh my god it's of course mostly males who post this though <laughs> of course it is of course it is men are gross men are disgusting <laughs> barely like them <laughs> that's missed connections for you sis Ugh. So and i'll funny. keep missing those connections because that's gross i always wondered i was like maybe I was telling a friend, I was like, I know I'm never someone's misconnections because I've been me mugging everybody. Yeah, you got a resting bitch face. I do. I'm just like, don't fucking look at me. Mm -hmm. Most of the time, I'm not going to lie. I live in Crustville. <laughs> I'm a crusty bitch. Like, not like I'm dirty or anything like that, but like I'm wearing sweatpants and a t-shirt like Monday through Friday. You know what I mean? Hair up in a bun. Like nobody's like, oh my God, look at that girl. Yeah. I mean, they probably are, but I mean- Some people like that shit. But I mean, like I'm not, uh, I live in Crossville Monday through Friday. And then after that, I'll, I'll come out. In your fucking Crocs. In my Crocs. <laughs> with my socks on. If you guys want some fun time, just hit up Lauren. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> Unless it's to send me money. My cash app is um dollar sign L Lolo XO. That I'll take that. <laughs> you can talk to me there. That's about it. Those are misconnections, y'all. Again, if you guys have any misconnections you want to submit to the pod, let a bitch know. All right. To tip off this pod, we're going to play Hella Awkward. Yay. As you guys remember from numerous pods or episodes, Hella Awkward is just a conversational game. Questions just to get deeper and just have convos, you know? So there's four categories. Real talk, dating, relationships, and sex. Okay. And I pre-picked out some questions for you that I thought were really good. Okay. And you just got to decide. I read it? Yes. What's something about you that nobody else would believe? That's hard. That is. That's a hard one. I'm um, thinking for me. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Well, I think people would believe this because they, people, I'm, I'm sure, I hope that people think I'm smart. But my whole life, I took AP classes. I would have to I don't, believe that. I don't know if people would automatically assume that about me. Hearing, By the time I got to high school, I had taken so many AP classes in middle school that I could opt out of high school classes. Hearing how you were in high school, it's really hard for me to believe that. Well, yes. I mean, it's not like I didn't get C's, but I was in AP classes. I wouldn't have known you were in AP classes. Yes. So that's a good one. What yes, about it you? Is. Me, I wanted to be a teen mom. <laughs> When I heard my mom struggles about being a teen mom, I didn't want to be a teen mom. My thing was, I want to be young when my kid is old. I'm the opposite. Er. I don't give a fuck how old I am. I just want to have one kid. Well, now I'm opposite because I don't want kids. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. When was the last time you cried? On the way here. I was listening to All Too Long, the 10-minute version by Taylor Swift. And that song resonates with me so much because of the lyrics are like, exactly stuff that i've gone through and every time i give myself breaks when i listen to that song but i listen to it at least like a couple times a month and i hadn't listened to it probably since my birthday and i just started crying oh my god it like uncontrollable that song makes me cry jesus my last time i cried was uh i believe i told natalie a week ago Mm. It's because I reflected on our friendship and I was like, we've been friends for 12 years, Aww. dude. 
Mm. We've been through a lot. You're my oldest friend, and I love you, bitch. I love you, bitch. That's sweet. Yeah. Shout out, Natalie. Hi, I love you. Shout out, Natalie's cute ass little baby fucking peanut she's so gorgeous she she's knows exactly so what the fuck she does when she smiles with her no teeth she's Girl. so cute she's adorable last one for the dating ask each person in the group what do you think my love language is what do you think my love language is girl it's not hard don't think too hard about it i think it's just giving you compliments and like having like asking you about yourself because you like talking about yourself but i think it's giving you compliments because i yeah you like gifts that's that's what that's my your, love language is like. really i love gift giving that see, I would have thought if you give me gifts, we won't have any problems. So your love language is gift receiving. Yes. I love when people think about me or see something that reminds them of me and then they, you know, actually you save the day because I lost all my lighters by giving them to Charles. <laughs> well, he stole all of them. <laughs> And I was like, oh my God, my bitch got me a lighter. <laughs> <laughs> For her birthday. Yes, yeah, June 5th. This bitch is a Gemini. Yeah. Uh. If you can't tell. Yeah. So I was like, what am I going to give her? I don't want to spend too much money because I don't have too much money. But right. I was like. No, I love that. I love just somebody thinking about me. That means more than what the actual present is. The fact that you thought about me. You got me the best card I've ever received in my entire life. You oh, could have really? just given me a card. That literally, that made me cry. <laughs> But I was by myself when I reread it. I even had my mom read it. I had like multiple people read it because it made me feel so good inside. You know? I'm happy. I was. My goal is to always make my friends cry. Yeah. So it doesn't even matter what's inside the bag. It's just the fact that you did something and you thought of me. That's enough. That's what my gift giving is about. Obviously, so I love diamonds gifts. and, <laughs> you know, purses and shit like that and experiences. But it just, even if you saw like a little succulent, succulent on the side of the road, like if I was dating somebody and you just brought it to me. That would make my whole day. What do you think my love language um, is? Compliments. I know it's not affection. You're wrong. I don't like compliments. You like affection? Yeah. What? But you don't even like people. Hu- no, you are a hugger. I like affection. You are a hugger. I'm. I'm. I'm getting you confused with Giuliani, who will hug you once a year. <laughs> no, if I could have all my friends hug me, th- why do you think I'm always like? Ee! Hugging yeah. You no, you're should. right. You are. You're a hugger, and yeah. you're a long hugger. I am. I like well, we both got each other wrong. Party, so. best friend. Do we even know each other? <laughs> <laughs> but no, I don't like PDA. I don't, the most I would do is hold your hand, but I never liked my um, boyfriends kissing me that like that in public. Like, I don't like you groping me and shit. Yeah, in public. I'm not really a fan of PDA. Either. I don't like PDA like that. Like the most, and I barely like holding your hand. Yeah. And it's because my hand gets sweaty. Well, yeah, that's exactly what it is. And it's uncomfy. Yes, but like I like affection. I like that's to me that's um confirmation that we're kind of like on the same page and stuff like that. Right, right. But right. I hate compliments. I never got them as a kid. So I don't like compliments either. I always just laugh because I feel uncomfortable. Exactly. But I can give a compliment like any day. Yeah. If you call me cute, we're good. If you go anywhere <laughs> over that, it's like unknown Ugh, territory. You want something. Has a friend or lover ever used their mental health as a crutch to take advantage of you? Can mental health ever be used in that way? Yes. Yes, it can. It can. And have, the answer is yes. I have friends, like I spoke on the pod last week, who love to use their mental health against and use that as a crutch. Just so- I it, don't use my- you, 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 I don't. Yeah, you don't ever use it to me. You, shockingly, because I know the stuff you go through, I don't expect you to be as present as you are because you are going through a lot of stuff and yeah. stuff. But you put in as much effort as I do. And that's kind of like also, if it could be a love, a love language, I, I cherish- like ma- energy effort. matched. Yeah. Like matched energy. Me too. Yeah, like in the last pod, that's one of my deal breakers as friends. Like if you're not matching my effort in terms of if I text you and you're busy, I get it. Just don't leave me on red. Say, yo, I'm busy. I'll talk to you later. I also am the kind of person that won't respond right away, but I'll respond by at least by the next day. Exactly. But then it's also just like, don't leave me on red. Yeah, I don't do that. Eric so, does that to me. Yeah. So <laughs> Eric just will like, literally read my messages and not respond. Exactly. And I don't like that because then you're ignoring me and you're making me think like, ew, what a bitch. Why the fuck are you ignoring me? Yeah. But then also it's like, I need effort like reciprocated and stuff like that. For certain friends... I give you the same effort you give me. Right. I, no, I do that all the time. So I used to not be like that. I used to be like overcompensating and stuff like that. And I stopped doing that because exactly. it's just so detrimental to your own like health. Exactly. And then I've oh. noticed that like if you're, I'm always inviting you places and you're always declining, I'm not going to invite you anymore. I'm going to be no. like, fuck it. I don't care. 
So my thing is effort. Like I need to get, I need to receive the same effort that I give into you. Right. Often. Yeah, I do that same thing. I, whatever place people give me in their life, I'm starting to give them the same place back in my life. But back to the crutch, a lot of people like to be like, I wasn't, I was so stressed. I haven't felt, I've been depressed. We're da, all da, 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 stressed. Da. We're all depressed. Exactly. I mean, I've gone through situations, me and Natalia have gone through situations where we haven't talked for like six months. Yeah. So it's like, but at least when we started to hang out again, I was like, I'm sorry for being distant and mm-hmm. all that kind of stuff. I wasn't like, oh, these are all the excuses in the world. No, I'm just sorry for being distant. Like, that's it. Exactly. You know I mean? That's and all I need. And let's build our relationship at, back up. Exactly. And then at a certain point, I was like, okay, I get it. Like, cool. Stuff just happens sometimes. Exactly. But don't ignore my text and then text me later on. I'm bored. Yeah. Okay. Do you believe you've met your soulmate? Yes. I'm leaving it at that. <laughs> I'm not elaborating. Yeah. I don't think I have. Again, my soulmate slash husband is not in the United States. Every person I've met so far along the way, high school and work and all that bullshit, right. always been an ick right. at a certain point. Like right. if I had a crush on you, you did something that was mad, like, ugh. Yeah. Nasty. So mm-hmm. I don't think I've ever met my soulmate. I don't think I have a soulmate, but I know I will have a husband different mm, i fully believe in soulmates i'm like a hopeless romantic but you're also very into like the rocks and the spirits yeah i am so i've done some um some love spells <laughs> <laughs> anyway on to the next thing <laughs> okay <laughs> sometimes love is enough what is missing in your relationship more time yeah you i don't have like- enough time i'm so busy mm-hmm. it's not like how it used to be like my life has changed so much in the last year that like I have to take on my own responsibilities and I have to work harder. And it kind of, with my relationship right now, it affects the relationship because I don't have as much time for my partner. I'm not in a relationship, but the things oftentimes that were missing in the relationships I did have, um, it was never, it never got to love. It was always stopped that lust. And it was because they never had ambition. Mm. And they never wanted to grow. They were always complacent Mm. in the situation that they're in. And it's just like, I'm okay for right now, but after time- This is my end all be all. Exactly. Like after time, I want to grow. I need to grow because I get tired and I get tired of repetition after for so long. Mm -hmm. So that was always the case. They were okay with how they're living, which is not a problem. Do you, as long as you're happy. Yeah, whatever makes you happy. But if it doesn't make me happy, I- that was fun. That was cute. Yeah. They were cute. They I were really relatable. Provoking. <laughs> they were also like uh, stuff that's going on right now. Well, that was fun. It was fun. I love that game. It is. We're going to be doing it again. I'm trying to get through the box. Y'all should get hella awkward and play it at home when Natalia does it on the pod. Enjoy yes. it. So play it along. Play. And then if you really... If you resonate with a question and you want to share your story, share it in the comments. Yes. I'm here. I won't read it, but I'll definitely, well, I won't read it on the pod, but I'll read it in person yeah. and I'll we'll respond. Read it. But yeah, Hella Awkward is so fun. It is Black created. It released we love that. Earlier, to, um, earlier this year during Black History Month. And it's been good so far, as you guys have seen on the pod. Love it. And it definitely is a conversation provoking. Love it, love it, love it. Well, that was the pod, guys. Thank you for so much for sticking around. Again, we got goals. Reach 500 subscribers in six months. We could do it. I believe in you, bitches. That goes for my audio listeners, my visual viewers. Let me know how you feel. Let me know how you're liking it. If you want to say something in the comments, let me know. If you're listening on the audio side, leave a review. Leave a comment if you feel. Whatever you do, just say it with love. Anything else you want to say before we sign off? No, but it's been fun, guys. Leave comments about the hell awkward things that we went over and we'll respond. I'll respond even too. Yeah. And then her cash app is dollar sign Lolo, L-O-L-O-X-O. So kisses and hugs. Ow! Bye. Bye. Dos vidanya. Bye.